be an account a debit balance if there is some kind of policy so for example if we purchase something and we typically put like a down payment on the purchase of something before we receive it it could be possible that the system then has has been set up that we put that into a, a negative payable meaning we would kind of have a negative payable to the uh to the vendor why would we do that because the accounting system makes it a little bit easier to do it could make it a little bit easier to track by vendor what is owed to the vendor uh instead of putting it into into basically an advanced an advanced payment so instead of putting it into an asset in other words of an advanced payment before we receive the, the goods whether it be inventory or some other type of asset we put it in as a negative liability because it's going to match up uh once we received the goods that we were going to receive and the system will make it a little bit easier for us to do that uh with regards to the matching up process of the vendors so if we if that is the case and we would probably want to inquire to the organization to see if that's going to be so something they do within their normal policy we may well have debit balances in uh the vow in the accounts payable accounts and then we're just going to reclassify them from uh debit you know negative balances of a liability to asset balances and then we have separate short-term and long-term payables we want to make sure that we're separating out the short-term and the long-term payables make sure that different types of payables are properly classified so if we have different types of classifications of payables we want to make sure that they are in those proper classifications next we're going to take a look at the assertion of presentation there are two disclosure items of primary importance for accounts payable and accrued expenses with regards to presentation auditor needs to make sure that all related party uh, purchase transactions have been identified so remember whenever we have those related party transactions we could think of a related party such as a subsidiary uh, or something like that then we have a we have issues because we're not we're concerned that there's not an arm's length transaction we don't have market forces to help us determine that the transaction is at basically market prices therefore we want to identify those for sure and look into those types of transactions if material the related party purchase transactions should be disclosed so if the related party purchase transactions are materially material component we want to disclose those because again that relationship kind of makes those transactions a bit suspect in terms of whether their market validity of those types of transactions the other primary concern is purchase commitments when the entity has entered into a formal long-term purchase contracts proper disclosure of the terms of the contract should be provided as a footnote so when we have long-term basically contracts we want to make sure that we're clear on what the commitment is in the contract if we have a very complex contract and it's if we're dealing with something that's going to be material that's a problem we want